Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is make the two mounting blocks that are going to act as the attachment point between your adjuster bench base and the underside of your bench top. Now these are something we do sell separately, so they can be part of your Craftsman's hardware package, but you can easily make them yourself, and I want to show you how to do that now. Now the mounting brackets have a hole in each end, uh, which are there to accept the uh, 3 8 inch lag screws that are going to create the pivot point uh, that we need at each end of the bench. We're also going to be drilling holes through the thickness of the mounting block to accept another pair of lag screws that will do the actual attaching. Now you can see this one's made out of plywood, in fact the same plywood as we used here. Um, it's been doubled up um, and it's going to be just fine. But in this case, you can use virtually any wood to make this part. And we're going to use uh, three quarter inch thick solid red oak uh, to make these for our leg sets. So you're going to need that material. You're going to need your table saw. You're going to need, again, a hand uh, drill, this time fitted with a 3 8 inch twist drill. I'm going to use my, my power driver again with the 9 16 inch socket. You don't need that necessarily, but you will need a 9 16 inch box wrench. I'm going to be using a marking gauge. If you don't have a marking gauge, you can do just what needs to be done using a, a tape measure uh, and a, or a ruler and a pencil. It'd be good if you have that drill press again. And I've opened up my last pouch of hardware. So anyway, from that three quarter inch thick red oak board, I've cut two pieces that are an inch and a quarter wide and two feet long. Um, before I left the table saw, I then cut a dado centered down one face of one of those pieces, and the dado is a quarter inch deep and a quarter inch wide. Now you can do that using a, a dado stack, uh, but it's probably easier just to lower your standard blade to a, a quarter inch height, uh, and then set your fence to a half an inch, and then push this over the blade from each side. And that should leave you with a quarter inch by quarter inch dado uh, down that length. And that's what we want. So do that any way you want to. And once you've done it, we're going to glue that dadoed face to one of the faces of the second piece. Okay, now you don't need to watch me spread glue and apply clamps. Uh, so we'll pretend I did that and you end up with something that looks like this. Now I did not use metal fasteners to uh, hold these together till the glue dried because the last thing we're going to do is uh, cut this down in thickness by about a quarter of an inch and we don't want metal fasteners in the way dulling our blade. Okay, so you're going to have to spread the glue, clamp, and wait. But you'll end up with something that looks like this. The next thing we need to do is cut it into our two mounting blocks and they need to be the appropriate length. Now, remember this board is 11 inches wide and to its edges we've bolted the uh, toothed members and our mounting block has to sit between those two members and not only does it have to fit in there but it needs to pivot and at one end it needs to pivot and slide. So we need a little bit of room. So the proper length is going to be a sixteenth of an inch under 11 inches. So we'll cut this into two pieces, a sixteenth of an inch under 11, uh, and we'll end up with two pieces that look like this. Now I'm going to check here. Okay, we got that little bit of room we need, so that's good. Uh, now realize that by gluing those two pieces together, our quarter inch by quarter inch dado has been turned into a quarter inch square hole. Now that quarter inch square hole will happily accept the threaded portion of our 3 8 inch lag screw, but the top of that shaft is unthreaded. And I'm a little concerned that when this gets driven home, it may uh, cause the end of our mounting block to split. So what I want to do is uh, use my hand drill with the 3 8 inch bit to 
turn that quarter inch square hole into a three eighths inch round hole. So I'm going to step over to the vise and I'm going to put this well down in the vise so not only is it held for drilling uh, but also when I drive this lag screw in for the first time it will be giving support uh, to that piece of wood which we will welcome. Now I'm going to do the drilling with my hand drill 3 8 inch bit and you can see I've given myself a, a depth gauge in the form of this red tape and I set that in from the end of the bit by about the same length as the uh, unthreaded portion of our lag screw. So let me round that out and before I take it out of the vise I'm going to drive it home with my uh, I'm going to drive that lag screw home with my power driver. And that should do. So the dado has not, uh, not only created the hole, but it's also made sure that our lag screw is entering squarely to the end of this. Okay, so I'll do the same thing to the second end of that mounting block, and then I'll do the same thing to my second mounting block, and then the, the next thing I'll need to do is drill the, these two holes. And those two holes need to be uh, spaced two and a half inches in from each end. So. I'm going to use my marking gauge at this point. The marking gauge has an inch scale down its beam and I'm going to set this to, I'm going to set the fence to two and a half inches. Now if you're not familiar with the marking gauge, it has a sharpened steel pin at this end which is going to scratch a line across the wood as I drag it. Uh, parallel to the end. Okay, and then I'm going to change this to half the thickness. This is an inch and a quarter, so I'm going to set this to five-eighths of an inch, and then I'm going to scratch another line across those initial markings, and where the, where the lines cross, I'm going to uh, drill my hole and I'm going to do that at my drill press uh, using my 3 8 inch um, twist drill. Now if you don't have a if you don't have a marking gauge you can certainly uh, mark for that drilling using uh, a tape measure and a pencil and that'll work just fine. So let me let me switch that bit over to the drill press. I'll drill those holes and I'll meet you back here. Okay so We've drilled our holes and we're, we're almost finished with our mounting blocks. In fact, here's one that is finished and you can see that the one we're working on is thicker than the finished one. So the next thing we need to do is take our two mounting blocks back to the table saw and cut them down from their present thickness to an inch and three eighths. Okay, one and three eighths inches. And notice that the hole here is a little bit off center. So the material that we, we're going to remove needs to come from that side, the side that has the hole. Okay, so we reduce this one to inch, inch and three eighths. And the next thing we need to do is uh, attach it uh, to the leg set. So this is the leg set that has the slots. The other end is going to have just the three eighths inch diameter holes. Now at the other end, uh, when I'm positioning these, I'm concerned about two things. I want to make sure that it's square to the overall uh, leg set, but I also want to make sure that it's not down like that. I want it up like this. Okay. Now at this end, the one with the slots, I have a third thing I'm uh, requiring. I want them square. Um, I want this upright, but I also want the lag screws to be all the way at that end 
of the um, of the slot. So once I see that all those three things are are uh, happening, I'm going to tighten that up like so, and I'll do the same thing here. Let me use this. Get a little more control with the hand uh, wrench. That's what we need. We're going to do that at both ends. Uh, and, and this is going to hold them in position for the next uh, couple of steps. And the next step we'll take is to use our two leg sets in conjunction with two four-foot rails uh, to do the overall assembly of our base.